it doesn't work. Um, so we've moved into this rural property and uh, we were told that if the gate doesn't open, that's because uh, we don't get a lot of sun here in Oregon during the winter. And it was probably because the battery wasn't getting enough power. And uh, if you just gave it a little lift, that would open up the door. That would open up the gate. So I thought that would be an easy project to fix. Put in a uh, new solar panel, new battery, new solar charger. And uh, see if we can get it so that this gate opens by itself. Turns out though, that wasn't the problem. Like all good engineers, which I'm not really, I was going by the information that I was told, which was it was a problem with the charge. And I thought if I fixed that, I'd fix the door. So I put in a new solid panel, new controller, and all of that last weekend. And as you can tell, it ain't working. There we go. So, turns out it's a little bit more interesting. And here that gives you a clue as to what's going on. Um, a little bit more interesting to fix, so I thought I'd uh, show you how I am fixing this. All right, we have her open. Um, I think I might start off by giving you a quick tour of uh, this mechanism and what I've done to it to date. So, when I first opened this up, I was kind of impressed. Um, it's all electromechanical. Uh, this is a rather old unit. And um, I've done a couple of other gate projects in the past, and they've all been relatively modern, microcontroller, all that sort of stuff. But that wasn't the case here. And I was kind of happy about that, because electrical and mechanical, much less likely to fail. You know, computers, are they, uh, yeah, computers. Anyway, so what we have back here is we have um, two relays. We have a motor here. There's a gearbox down there. The motor turns via a pulley back there, reduces via the gearbox, that goes out to this big wheel, which is going to be arm, which opens and closes the gate. At least that's the theory. It's rather chilly today. Um, so let's show you opening and closing the gate. So the motor is running. Tonk, 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 tonk. Gate closes. There are some springs down there acting as the counterweight or counterforce. So that when you press the button again, whoop, it's doing it. It's not opening. Um, it should make it easy to open. So I believe the charge thing, uh, when I was told it was the battery and the solar power, um, wasn't enough to run it. That that kind of makes sense. You know, if the counterweight um, is not completely balanced, it might take a lot more force to lift it than it does to to drop it. And if there's not enough charge, it wouldn't open. So what I did is I replaced a couple of things. Um, you can see that's where the old battery was. I had a spare battery lying around. I replaced it with that. Got one of those cheap little solar charge controllers. Uh, made, I think, what is the third upgrade of the remote system here. You can see the first one, the second one, and this is the third one that I added. Also, obviously, have a much larger solar panel, replacing this small guy up here. I thought, great, that should fix the problem. But as you saw when I went to press the button, the gate no worky, does not open. You can hear relays firing, um, but it isn't opening. So, did some digging and I worked out what the problem was. We did not talk about this wheel here. This wheel here is driven by um, the reduced gear that drives the... Um, gate and it's just a sort of friction drive it looks like there's some rubber or electrical tape but it slips but it's supposed to turn when the gate turns and you'll notice there are two posts here two bolts when it's all the way back in this position it activates a micro switch and when it's all the way in the other position it activates another micro switch these are limit switches this tells the relay logic is the gate open or is it closed and if the bottom end limit switch isn't operating, 
press the button, it does not want to open. We can fix that by forcing that limit switch closed and she opens. So I'm not the first person who's run into this problem before. Um, when I first opened this up last weekend, I saw um, there were two micro switches here. There, you can see there was another one mounted here. Someone had tried to put another micro switch facing forward a little bit more to make it more likely to catch this bolt when it comes through. You can see it's all the way at the end of its adjustable travel there. So I thought if they moved the micro switch forward, that would fix it. But you can see this metal is kind of bendy. Um, it's not super reliable. The gate can bounce when it hits the bottom, can trigger the switch and then bounce off it. Um, so it's not super reliable. So I've decided to bite the bullet and go from an electromechanical system to modern technology. So last night I broke out the soldering iron and put this together. Let me give you a show of what I've done here. So I'm in the truck. It's a little chilly out there and uh, my delicate hands were getting a little chilly. Anyway, um, so last night I decided to bite the bullet and uh, replace the electromechanical system of relays and micro switches with uh, some more modern stuff. So what I have here, this is an H-bridge. Um, an H-bridge, I'll probably draw you a diagram, explain that, but it basically allows you to take power in and drive a motor either forwards or backwards via digital control. The digital control comes on this board under here. It's kind of hidden in there. There's a little Arduino Pro Micro that also has um, some breakouts up here for Hall Effect sensors along here for interfacing with the gate remote and then some just general purpose breakouts for other things that I might add in the future like a keypad or an interrupt sensor or things like that. Anyway, um, so I think th this should be okay. This is 30 amps. Um, I tested the current draw on the battery, sorry, on the motor yesterday. Um, when it's shutting the gate, it's like seven, eight amps. When it's opening it, it peaks out at like 15 amps. Um, so 30 amps continuous current here should be fine. This is rated to do up to 80 amps for one second so I think we will be fine here. Um, I have uh, informally coated this uh, with some uh, epoxy and some polyurethane in other spots. Unfortunately I did I was not patient and uh, I have managed to glue the USB connector in there uh, which is fine. Um, that will be the power source for the Arduino, the battery solar charger will be the power source for the motor. So let's get it back out there in the weather, uh, hook this thing up and uh, see if it works. So I'm disassembling it, um, got the battery disconnected, disconnected all the old circuitry, uh, motors disconnected, sorry. And <laughs> it's funny, um, I noticed this large, I don't know what this is, some sort of ratcheting shackle thing was dangling off this, which looks like it already has a little bit of a counterweight on it. I also found a screwdriver wedged in back there somewhere. Looks like I'm not the only person who's tried to repair this, obviously. Um, I'm fine ripping apart the electronics, like that stuff I understand well, but I'm not quite sure what this mechanism here does. It sort of seems to, some sort of, I don't know, clutch of some sort, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure why, I mean, I guess this is to maintain tension on the belt. And that's what that spring there is for. And so maybe the weight was just applying more tension on the belt. Anyway, um, I'm always nervous dicking around with mechanical stuff, especially bodged mechanical stuff like that, because who knows what people were actually thinking. They probably had really good ideas um, trying to fix it the way they did it. Um, and, you know, I shouldn't say too much because I've done plenty of repairs that my future self opens up and goes, what the hell was I thinking? Um, but anyway, it's always fun to find remnants, uh, repair archaeology. All right, I'm going to keep on getting this thing removed and uh, wire in um, microcontroller. 
All right, everything is powered up, plugged in. Magic smoke has not been released, so I'll call that a success for step one. Step two is to see if the H-bridge will actually run the motor. So I haven't connected any of the sensors up, but this here is where we'd connect to this guy. Um, but if I short it out, let's see if it opens. I have not tested this yet. We will see. Look at that. Oh. It is trying to shut it. When it's already shut. The good news is, um, in my code here, I built um, a timeout that never runs the motor for more than enough time it should take to open and close it. So it now should think that it is shut. So if I press the button again, it should open. Look at that. Sweet. Again, I can probably shorten that timeout given how quickly it opens and closes. Currently got it set to 15 seconds. That's in more than like 10 seconds, but we'll look at the video replay. Let's do that one more time. Ha! Oh. Coming down is definitely faster. That's not good. Ah, uh, that makes me nervous. <sighs> okay. So obviously we don't have the sensors connected. Um, the plan is uh, to stick some to stick some magnets on here and uh, put the sensors along here somewhere. I can work that out. Um, once I get this all mounted up properly, because this is not um, the right way to mount it. So I'm going to take this all apart and uh, we'll come back when it's all mounted up properly. So I made a sheet metal mounting plate, uh, stuck everything on there, ripped out all the old pallets and wired it up. Um, I've attached the Hall Effect sensors sort of in a temporary way. Um, I've got the sensor here and a magnet mounted on the rim of the wheel there and a sensor there and a magnet mounted a little bit back from the rim. That way the magnets don't trigger each other as they go around. But, it's a little bit fabric hobbled, but I think it works. Down. It comes up. And just as the magnet goes past, it turns the motor off. That all seems to be good. And down. Same deal again. All right, I'm gonna call that a day. It's sort of been snowing, stopping and starting. My hands are a little chilly. I think that's a good day's work.